So I tried to sew the armrest fabric into like a, you know, like a little pouch that the wood would slip into and it turned out horrible. I spent not a short amount of time on it. I got really discouraged because when you see it initially, you're like, oh no, this is gonna be so lumpy and gross. And then I had an epiphany. Uh, I thought, you know what? I don't have to sew everything, especially in my scale. And this fabric was so coarse and so thick because of the way I wanted it to look. And it frayed so much. It was, it was really hard to work with. So what I actually ended up doing was gluing ev almost everything together. Some pieces I actually hand sewed and then some pieces I just glued together. So you can see, <laughs> just looking at the difference in the clip is, you know, you don't have to be fancy and hand sew everything. Gluing it ended up making it look so much better. So I used a long strip of the fabric and wrapped it around the edges, making sure not to glue the actual edges because the glue does seep through. So you have to glue on the parts that are going to be covered up with more fabric. I made sure the threads of the fabric were straight and square with the rest of the pieces. If you just glue it wherever and you don't care, it's not going to look right and don't forget to free any holes that you need to be open for the support rods later. I folded three sides of the outside of the armrest inward so that I could stuff it with batting. I made sure that I cut out a hole with scissors and then I glued around it just a little bit to keep it from fraying. And then I put a flat piece of fabric in the back and cut open where the holes needed to be free. The back piece I hand sewed. I wanted to cut out each individual piece, but I decided to do the exact same thing that I did with the armrests which was to have the one long fabric and sew a square all the way around that and then glue the edge onto the fabric and flip it inside out so that way it creates a pocket to stuff batting into. For all these pieces, you need to stuff them really tight especially with the tufted buttons. When you actually sew them and there's not enough batting, it's gonna look flat and it's not gonna look like it's supposed to. I also cut open the sides so that the support rod could fit through. I put sewing pins into the holes so that I could make them look exactly square and then I used where I put the pins to know how I needed to sew them together. I would just take a pin out when I put my needle through the hole. Also, I glued the back of the strings, really holding onto it, not giving slack at all. Held it with my hands, let it dry. And that's also what keeps the tufted buttons staying the way that they are, is by gluing the back and making sure that string doesn't move and it doesn't get loose. It looks like a hardcore set of abs. So with the buttons, I tried different things, but I ended up using the microbeads and I would glue the microbeads down when they were already covered in glue. So I just used my hands to roll the microbeads around with glue in my hands. It gave them this satiny yellow look because wood glue does dry yellow a little bit. It took the silver and it made it like this nice pearl gold kind of color and I like it a lot. The seat cushion is made from that long fabric strand again, sewed onto the top square part. And then I glued the wood on the side, giving a little bit of space at the top for batting, making sure that the slanted piece is on the correct side and not upside down.
The cushion came out a little wonky, but it you, you can't really tell. And then the foot cushion, I like it the best. I don't know why, probably because it's a super tiny piece, but I still ended up stuffing it with batting and doing the same, folding it on three sides, stuffing it, and then gluing it on the other side. And it's just like a tiny, precise little cushion. I love it. So that second part of the footrest was supposed to fold out and I was going to have Velcro that would attach it when it came out because that's what some recliners do. But the Velcro I had was so super thick and I didn't put it in the design to make it work better. I could have done a better job on that, but the recliner itself still looks appropriate. It's the only thing that I decided to remove from my original design and I'm okay with it. So now that everything is sewn together, all the pieces are ready to be assembled. I just took a picture of my CAD drawing with my phone and used that as reference when putting everything together. I attached the thicker stationary hinges onto the seat support and glued it on the lever side. I rounded off the longest support rod. I stained the lever and let it set in. I glued the footrest hinges to the footrest, as well as the skinnier stationary hinges to the footrest. You definitely have to pay attention to which holes you need to have tolerance and which holes need to fit tightly with the rod that it's attached to. Putting the footrest cushion into place was the first big step into getting this all together because it has nothing else attached to it, just the footrest. Glue the lever into place and then when you push it through, put a nut on the other side. Pretty close but not glued onto the side armrest. The sewing pin locks the fulcrum in place so that I can glue the fulcrum at the exact angle that is 180 degrees from the lever. And then glue it into place. The mechanism rods I made at the very end because they were longer than I had predicted. I just put them together and measured them with a sharpie and I made two each, two short ones and two long ones. I glued the back cushion hinges to the back cushion and then measured using the back cushion hinge now glued into the back cushion to find out how long the two long mechanism rods needed to be. Ooh, the mouthful. So the long mechanism rods, when you're placing them inside the footrest hinge, it needs to go nut, mechanism rod, nut, and then nut, rod, nut. And then place the rod back into the second hinge. I slid the support rod for the back cushion hinge into place with the mechanism rods inside of them. In between this entire process, I put the nuts where they needed to go so that the rods didn't move around. And to see it working so well, <laughs> it was so exciting. Glue the armrest and the seat support onto the armrest. I created a fabric piece to go onto the back seat cushion like you see in most recliners. I only glued it on the top half edges and not the bottom half because you want there to be slack when you open and close the recliner. I stained the legs and glue them on. And then I also glued a piece of fabric to the top of the seat support so that the mechanism inside is hidden. I wanted to make those long throw pillows for this recliner, but they weren't coming out as square and crisp as the umbrella pillows. I felt it just looked better without them instead of actually having those pillows that I tried to create. Here is the finished piece. 
This is one of those projects where I didn't think it was going to turn out well at all, even though I had so much planning done to it. It works and the mechanism is super smooth. I couldn't be happier with it. This is my biggest project so far. I created this all from scratch. I'm pretty proud of myself. I've personally never seen a working recliner miniature anywhere. Again, if you guys would be so kind, please share my video if you feel it's worth sharing. That would mean so much to me. I work really hard on these miniatures and I know I don't post all the time and that really hurts me. Please be sure to go watch Real Life Dollhouse Miniatures Mosaic Dining Set. She's the one who inspired me to make some modern furniture. This working piece is thanks to her. I'll leave links to her channel and video down in the description and also on the cards above. Follow me on Instagram if you want to see miniatures before they're posted on YouTube. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Keep watching to see how small the miniature is to my face. I want to give a shout out to Kamira Sadi on Instagram. He took inspiration from my Japanese garden and made his own and even added a really cool gazebo. Kamir, it looks amazing and I love the color scheme. It's so vibrant and beautiful. This video is a little different because it's not really a tutorial, but it is. I didn't write anything down before I did the script. I just kind of paused the video and said the things that I wanted to say about those specific parts. So if you guys really like the organic feel of my voice versus like the scripted, I put everything down, measurements and names of things and all that stuff. Please let me know what you like more or if you want me to combine them a little bit. I'm trying to do things a little differently, whether it's editing my video the way that you want or being a little bit more peppy and I'm, I do a lot of hand gestures. And I don't know if you guys want to see my face in videos, but if you do want to see my face, I'm just going to give you like a lot of polls. Um, please let me know, where's it going to be? This way. Please let me know up in the poll if you would like to see my face more. Here's the chair. That's what it looks like. And up to my face. Let me know if... This actually turned out smaller than you thought when you get to see it next to my face. It's a little longer than two inches. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Um, so, oh Jesus. <laughs> you on whether you like polls or not. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> Excuse me. But bye. <laughs>